The police say they've struck at the core of a major drug syndicate that's been operating in the Auckland region. They've arrested 26 people, seized more than $10 million in assets, including commercial drug making equipment. These police swooped on 34 properties across Auckland to net people they say are key players in the illicit drug scene. Those arrested face a range of charges and further charges may be laid. In 2020, police in Auckland, New Zealand noticed an increase in reports of a unique brand of ecstasy pills known as Pink Porsches. As they followed the trail of the pills, they could never have predicted the syndicate that the Pink Porsches would lead them to. Operation Cincinnati, an investigation that's been going for seven months now, uh, looking at a distribution network involved in ecstasy pill distribution. The ecstasy pills were just the tip of the iceberg to a network of hundreds of dealers selling at various locations across the city. The dealers appeared to target temporary accommodation providers where they would sell the drugs before moving to another location. They would never return to the same place twice, so this made it difficult for the police to track them down. It also indicated that the dealers were part of a larger and more sophisticated operation than what the police had first expected. So in order to focus more resources on the investigation, a task force was set up and codenamed Operation Cincinnati. It wasn't long before police identified a link between the dealers and the Comancheros and Rebels gangs. The Comancheros and Rebels are both motorcycle gangs which set up in Australia in the 60s and 70s. Over the last decade, they have established chapters throughout New Zealand. Operation Cincinnati was a nine-month-long investigation starting with surveillance of suspected members and conducting a series of raids which evidently brought an international syndicate to its knees, or at least in New Zealand it did. Over a period of just one week, more than 100 police officers carried out searches at 34 properties in Auckland region. More than 26 members of the gangs were arrested as part of the operation. The arrest included the leader of the Comancheros chapter in New Zealand, Seana Faka Osler. Police confiscated more than $500,000 worth of cash, drugs, illegal weapons, and vehicles. Amongst the seizures were a 2019 Ferrari Pista and a 2020 Porsche 911 Coupe. Unsurprisingly, the Porsche was hot pink, just like the ecstasy pills which had led police to the discovery of the gang. They also found the press used to make the ecstasy pills as well as large quantities of methamphetamine and MDMA. In total, the raid seized more than $10 million in assets from the gang's operations. Most of the gang members arrested pled guilty to the charges brought against them, ranging from possession of methamphetamine for supply, unlawful possession of ammunition, and participating in an organized criminal group. Many of those who pleaded guilty indicated they would be seeking sentences of home detention or community supervision instead of prison terms. But the head of the syndicate in New Zealand, Seana Fakosilea, pled not guilty to some of his charges and was set to face trial in July 2022, but his trial was delayed by COVID-19. Sentences for similar crimes in New Zealand have ranged from 8 to 15 years imprisonment. When journalists looked into the history of the men arrested, it appeared many of them had been faced with challenging circumstances in the months and years before they joined the gangs. Some had been homeless and unable to find employment and were responsible for supporting families in New Zealand and overseas. The offer of a network of brothers and a way to get rich quick seems to have been what drew the men in. Maybe if more support had been available to them during these difficult times, they wouldn't have made the choice to become involved in violent gang activity in the first place. So, you know, here you see the Rolls Royces and the cars and, you know, out on, out on social media sort of uh, marking themselves. Well, I think we just want the community to remember that really behind that is an immense amount of suffering. And while they deal these drugs, those people and their families are suffering from the addiction that, that they suffer. So the message today is, you know, and we keep saying, no more. <laughs>